Today we're going on a history lesson. The keyboard hobby proper reminds me of like my first year of university and the hype that was around Supreme. Everything was built on hype and there was this massive like cult community. You paid how much for that box logo? Jelly Epoch what? What does that mean? What does it mean? I spent a hell of a long time like spider diagramming this right and it must have looked like that meme of the lady doing the maths. Because the more you think about it, the more so many different factors influenced how the hobby has evolved and what we see today. So many different things have happened in the space, especially in the past few years, for us to get to the point we are now. So before we can explain this, we need to go back in time. The year was 1973. The Dalai Lama made his first visit to the UK. I was just a glimmer in my mother's future. And the home computer was just on the horizon. The modern computer began to rise in popularity and a number of different companies started test running a variety of different types of switches in order to mimic the feeling of using a typewriter. This included Cherry. Cherry wouldn't go on to manufacture the MX switch for another 10 years. Another well-loved technology starts emerging, like the IBM buckling spring, seen in boards like the Model M and the Model F, which were first produced in 1985 and 1981 respectively. As the modern computer flooded into the mainstream, companies started looking for ways to cut costs for production. Our beloved keyboard took a big hit. Mechanical switches were far too expensive for companies to make, and manufacturers began exploring alternative, cheaper options. That's right the membrane keyboard. Rubber domes became industry standard, with the AEK2 ceasing production in 1999, and the last original Model M was produced in the same year. And you know, it really is a huge shame. There's a number of different people who collect vintage boards, and when you look back, I can really understand why. Some of these boards were sick. Don't fret my fellow keyboard warriors, not all hope was lost. The early 2000s saw a rise again in the mechanical keyboard switch. Gaming companies begun adopting them, companies like SteelSeries released the 6GV2, and the first iteration of the Razer Black Widow was released in the same year. Looks a bit different from what we know now, huh? Geek Hack was first founded in 2007, arguably one of the most pivotal points in the hobby. Nowadays, it's exclusively used by designers to highlight interest checks and upcoming group buys. Some of the first Korean customs started emerging during this time, as well as the very well-known message board KBD Mania. The early 2010s is where it really starts getting juicy. 2011 was the year that GMK first started producing keycaps. <laughs> what a year that must have been, huh? Ah. Uh. Good old GMK wait times. The custom scene really started to find its feet, with the Death Authority Forum opening in 2011, both RMK and Mech Market releasing in 2012, and the Death Authority Wiki seeing its first post one year later. 2012 was also the year that Mastrop was founded. The early 2010s also saw a number of well-loved customs. This included the Duck Orion, the KMAC-1 in 2012, and the beloved OTD-360C in 2013. The GH60 project also emerged at the same time, this was an open source programmable keyboard project from the Geek Hack community. And it's crazy looking back because things like this can definitely be linked to most of the cheap 60% Chinese PCBs that are used today. One of the biggest turning points in the hobby came in 2014 with the end of Cherry's patent on the MX switch technology. This led to a number of different companies producing MX style switches for the first time. One big name is Razer and both Gatron and Kale emerged as Cherry MX clone companies. Obviously, now they're known for a little more than that, but we all gotta start somewhere, right? The next few years saw some big stepping stones, with the TGR Jane first being posted on Geek Hack in 2015. Zeal PC, best known for switches such as the Zelios and Telios, appeared around the same time, and KBD fans opened shop in 2016. It's kinda of mad, yeah, because however many years I've been in this hobby, until I started scripting this video, I never made the link that KBD fans stood for keyboard fans. We can't talk about the evolution of the hobby without addressing artisans. With Clack Factory unveiling the first resin cast MX and Topre artisan keycaps back in 2010, inspired by Clack Sculpt, the next few years saw a massive surge in designers, experimenting with a number of different materials, sculpts, and selling methods. If you want to learn more about the artisan hobby as a whole, I made a whole video on it that I'll link at the end for you. What comes after 2015, kids? That's right, 2016. The linear trajectory of the hobby didn't stop. 2016 saw the well-known novel keys 
first opening for business from the founder's basement, with other notable boards first appearing during this time such as the Limworks Dolphin and the EM7. Now famed TGR V2 also came out in October of this year, releasing 40 units. One creator who is the reason that many of us are here, including me, is Tehar Types. The first streams and videos still online date back to 2018, showing sound tests, tutorials, and eventually commission builds. Damn, remember when we had to clip stabilizers? I mean, I still do, I'm not paying $30 for a set of TX dabs. Have you seen the state of the pound? It was around this time that hype for the hobby really started to boom. This was the year of the Holy Panda after all. It seemed to go for up to $6 per switch. Those of you unaware of the origin of the Holy Panda, it was originally a Franken switch created by one of the rights over a top clack, combining the housing of an Indir Panda and the stem of a true Halo switch. They eventually hit group by and led to that sound test. You know the one. Around this time, there was also a lot of drama relating to the tooling for the Indir Panda housing being lost. Speaking of drama, we then had the release of the Glorious Pandas. Nowadays, a number of different manufacturers produce Panda switches, and the original Holy Pandas really sparked the trend of tactile switches with little pre-travel and a large tactile event. 2019? got a bit crazy. We saw Duroc JWK switches manufactured for the same time, and this led to the whole Stelios controversy. If you haven't heard of this, it was a term used to describe the fake Zelios and Telios V2s that were being sold under the guise of genuine Zeal materials. This was also around the same time that fake Zeal stabilizers first came to the market. In terms of artisans, we saw the now cult-followed Bongo Cat artisans from Hello Caps, as well as Late Tree Allen producing caps for the first time. And then we get to that year. As everyone was locked in their homes, it was only natural that different hobbies started to get explored, you know. I remember the price of home gym weights and driving sim setups going through the roof. Everything was crazy prices, including keyboards. Covid even blessed us with some of the best creators in the space today. With Covid acting as the substrate, the release of the Tfu commission by Teha in January was the catalyst for the absolute craziness that the hobby has amounted to. As a result, it became a year of mad hype. Switches were never in stock, let alone plates, cases, anything. I remember watching a video by Christopher Yee in late 2020 and he highlighted how keyboards are the worst hobby on the internet. And you know what? He was so right. At the time, we didn't have the wealth of information that we do now, and everyone was pretty elitist to give it away. There was a lot of trial and error, unless you wanted to trawl through Geek Hack or RMK to try and find the answer to whatever obscure question you had. And I'm just so thankful that people who get into this hobby actually have a good place to start nowadays. 2020 also saw some class favorites in Switches. We had the C3 Tangerines, the Lavenders, Gap Black Inks, to name a few. We made it. 2021. What a journey it's been so far. But we are nowhere near done, because 2021 we saw a lot in the hobby. At the start of the year we had the release of the Boba U40s. Even today they're one of everyone's favourite tactile switches. Some of the biggest names really started to come into their own with Owl Labs pioneering the P foam marbly sound signature with the release of boards like the Jelly Epoch and the Mr. Suit. This was also the year that the tape mod really came into its own with everyone masking taping up the bottom of their PCBs to get that extra thong. I think 2021 was really the year of innovation, you know, it stepped the keyboard hobby up from what we had before and the different mounting styles to people really trying things for themselves and off the back of that 2021 really solidified that the hobby can be budget friendly with the rise in popularity of Akko and Keychron boards not to mention the release of the GMMK Pro. No matter what your opinion on Glorious as a company are this board was really the first in its class and was a great gateway to a lot of the people who I think are probably in the hobby today. 2021 also blessed us with a number of new switch manufacturers we had companies like Texi producing the Zaku for Bolsa Supply, as well as the KTT line of switches. Now we're almost caught up to present day, and that's not to say that 2022 didn't deliver. This year has seen a wide variety of more entry-level boards, making the hobby more accessible. Boards like the QK60, the QK65, and the Meltrix Zoom 65. We've also had a number of different keycap manufacturers offering shorter lead times than GMK and producing pretty good caps. We have so many switch options now and so many different manufacturers. The hobby has arrived at a place that I think all hyped hobbies do. You know, the hype dies down and we're left with these really good innovative products that are in stock. This last few years we've seen a huge surge in innovation, a huge surge in new ideas, and I'm excited to see what we have in store going forward. I hope you've enjoyed coming on this journey with me today. If you have, make sure to subscribe down below and leave a like if you learned something. And as always, see you later nerds.